welcome to a final chapter of servanthood we've looked at three chapters or we call three part series of servanthood and now we are preparing ourselves for the last and final part of servanthood and this is more significant i would say it's important to us as believers in the lord jesus christ why because the part for christ has modeled it for us so that we can emulate him practically and what a privilege that we are being called as the body of jesus christ of the body of Christ him being the head us being the body what a privilege that you and I have if you're being controlled and led by the perfect one altogether lovely altogether perfect we will not be swayed we will not be led astray but we know we will be able to do it perfectly as he did to us so welcome to part four of servanthood or they call the spirit of servanthood i believe you're going to be blessed when we read john chapter 13 verse 3 all the way to 17 is a long chapter but the key things here we will be able to pinpoint out and i want you to just if you are able to follow this just take your bible with you and let's go verse by verse as we dive into this word because it will come alive to us as we read it and once it comes alive to us then it will be even really really impactful so that we can take this ministry with a lot of humility and also with a heart that is ready to do that which we've been called to do which is so uh, life-changing not only to the people we minister to but also to we ourselves So it says, now before the Passover feast, Jesus knew that his hour had come. And it was time. <laughs> I like this when he says, it was time for him to leave this world and return to the Father. Having greatly loved his own who were in the world, he loved them and continuously loves them with his perfect love to the end eternally it was during supper when the devil had already pulled the thought of betraying jesus into the heart of judas iscariot simon's son wow that Jesus, knowing that the Father had put everything into his hands and that he had come from God and was now returning to God. Just see that. The identity of Jesus. He knows where he's come from. He knows what has been put in his hands. And he knows where he's returning to. And that's what we need to know. Where have we come from? What has God put in our hands? And where are we returning to? When we know those three key things, it will help us. I'm just getting ahead of myself to serve well. Because we know we are not serving just human beings. We are serving the Almighty God. And we are just vessels and tools in His hand to offer that service. So when Jesus knew that, he got up from supper, took off his outer garment, took out his robe, 
and taking a servant's towel, he tied it around his waist. Then he poured out water into the basin and began washing the disciples' feet and wiping them with a towel which was tied around his waist. Get that? The Bible is categorically clear that he didn't take any other person's towel <laughs> but the one that he tied on his waist. And that is what he used. When he came to Simon Peter, he said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? <laughs> Jesus replied to him, You do not realize now what I am doing, but you will fully understand it later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. What he meant is like, we can have nothing to do with each other. So Simon Peter said to him, Lord, in that case, wash not only my feet, but also my hands and my feet. <laughs> this conversation is very interesting. Jesus said to him, anyone who has bathed needs only to wash his feet and is completely clean. And you, my disciples, are clean but not all of you. For he knew who was going to betray him. For that reason he said, not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put on his outer robe and reclined at the table again, he said to them, do you understand what I have done for you? You call me teaching Lord, and you're right in doing so, for that is who I am. So if I, the Lord and the teacher, washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet as well. For I gave you this as an example so that you should do in turn as I did to you. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, a slave is no greater than his master, nor is one who is sent greater than the one who sent him very important for you and I. A slave is no greater than his master, nor is one who is sent greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, Jesus emphasizes even to us, if you know these things that you're not greater than me, If you know these things, you are blessed in favor of God. But not only knowing them, it says, if you put them into practice and faithfully do them. We have been called to put into practicality all that we learn from Jesus. And I'm, I'm amazed because Jesus not only told or spoke these things to us but what he did is he practically did them so that we can emulate him and pick it from him and that's what i want to talk about right this moment learning from jesus and impacting it unto others so we see one of the significant the importance here number one he rose from supper and laid aside, aside his garment. Meaning, Jesus left what he was enjoying on the table. And then he set aside his garments and took a towel and got it himself. And Paul brings it out clearly for us to understand what he did here. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 3 to 8, he says, Do nothing from selfishness, or empty conceit, meaning through factional motives or strife. It should not be about me wanting to show off in simple terms, but with an attitude of humility, being neither arrogant nor self-righteous. And sometimes we find ourselves in that place when we are serving people. I want to show how righteous I am or how 
I'm a servant. No. Regard others as more important than yourselves. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. And that's what Jesus portrayed. Getting self out and for the interest of others. And, Je and God portrayed that. They say, for God so loved the world. If we love people that won't be self, we'll regard them more important. Why? God showed that perfectly. And Jesus showed that in perfectly that he didn't just regard himself and all you know aligned to himself. Of course that was there, but he regarded us, you and I. Have this same attitude in yourselves which was in Christ Jesus. Which kind of attitude? Look to him as an example in selfless humility. Who or for he existed in the form and unchanging essence of God as one with him, possessing the fullness of all the divine attributes, the entire nature of deity. He was 100% God. He did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped or asserted as if he did not already possess it. Or was afraid of losing it and sometimes as we serve we feel I will you I will lose my credibility or my position for example if I'm a pastor and I, I stoop low like man you're a pastor you should be served you should not be going down and uh, making your hands dirty no it's not that way I'm not losing anything because whatever I have, I've received. And so I just give. So it's not like I'm the one in control of it. There is the one, the only one who is in control of it. And so as he tells me to do something, I need to do in obedience. And we see here from Jesus. Because he wasn't afraid of losing anything, but he emptied himself without renouncing or diminishing his deity, but only temporarily giving up the outward expression of divine equality and his rightful dignity. So you're not losing your dignity, man. <laughs> if you know your identity as it began before, where you've come from, what you have, and where you're going from, you will serve because you're serving the king of kings. By assuming the form of a born servant and being made in the likeness of men, he became completely human but was without sin, being fully God and fully man. After he was found in terms of his outer appearance as a man for a divinely appointed time, he humbled himself and still further by becoming obedient to the Father to the point of death, even death on a cross. So we see here, Jesus left the intimacy of heavenly banquet that he enjoyed with the Father and the Spirit. Continually to willingly take upon himself the form of a man in order for what? To redeem you and I. He left that. We can live our own comfort zones, comfortability to, be, to begin to serve others. After all, <laughs> whatever we have is not of our own. Whatever grace we carry is not of our own. It's from the one who created us and brought us into this world. And so when I re look at myself and I don't regard myself more highly than the other people that, that God brings on my way to serve them. And having that mind of Christ, I'm not losing anything. In fact, I'm gaining. And it's a privilege to serve. It is. 
So Jesus therefore emptied himself to come and dwell among us and become like one of us by wrapping himself in the towel of humanity. Dependence on the Father and being empowered by the Spirit. For you and I to serve well, number one, we need to be dependent on the Father and be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Like we see the life of Jesus, perfect model of servant. Number two, a true servanthood has the spirit of humility, lowliness of mind, and obedience, which involves experiencing many little deaths of going beyond ourselves. Whenever we are serving, we are dying to self. Yeah. The more I serve, the more self dies. The more I'm, I'm beating the fleshly man that will just want everything for itself. You know, that is the spirit of Lucifer. The only way to destroy to serve others. And that's what Jesus came. Give his life as a ransom for you and I. To serve us. Our master, our savior, giving us a perfect example. Who are we? We need to do and emulate that as well. And as, I, as we serve people, we are dying to self. We are telling no more spirit of Lucifer, of self. When we serve others, we die to contentions. We die to strife. We die to selfishness and empty arrogance which enables us to do what he says. To fall away he leads. And whatever it means we say, let it be. <laughs> when you read John chapter 12 verse 26, which speaks about the secret of life. What's the secret of life? Jesus says this, if anyone serves me, he must continue to faithfully follow me without hesitation, holding steadfastly to me conforming to my example in living and if need be suffering or perhaps dying because of faith in me the world wouldn't want to hear that but that's what jesus says here and wherever i am in heaven's glory there will my servant be also. Jesus didn't say, there will be my disciples also. There will be my friends also. But it says, there will be my servants also. Lovely thing to serve God. Thank you, Lord. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. I want you just to have that mind that as you're serving people, number one, you're not just wanting to show them that you have the spirit of Sabanu. Or number two, just wanting to show that I can. But when you're serving people, I want you to know that you're serving Jesus. And he says, where he is, you will also be. You're serving him. So just have that mind. I want to serve Jesus through the graces that is given to me. I give it back to him by serving others. Number two, true servanthood produces great liberation, what we call freedom. And I like this when it says, it's for freedom that Christ has set us free. <laughs> no longer subject to the yoke of slavery. Do you get that? We are not subject to the yoke of slavery. Why? Because Christ has set us free. And I wanted to know that when, because the Son has set you free, you're, you can serve people freely with a lot of freedom. We've been set free from our sins and we've been delivered and we've been set in a position of acceptance we've been set in a position of a privileged position of just serving god we've been set from being slaves of sin into being slaves of jesus i mean if you're jesus slave just just 
my amazing amazing service allows us to say no to the world's games of promotion and authority it abolishes our need and desire for a pecking order there is more of pouring ourselves into people's lives when in read galatians chapter 5 verse 13 to 14 says for you my brothers were called to freedom only do not let your freedom become an opportunity for the sinful nature worldliness and also is being mentioned here selfishness if you know the word you know i'm no longer a slave to self but i've been liberated i'm free to serve but through love serve and seek the best for one another for the law the whole law concerning human relationship is fulfilled in one precept you shall love your neighbor as yourself what does it mean that is you shall have an unselfish concern for others and do things for their benefit what does the world tells us it's just about me how can i gain how can i you know just me and that's the spirit of lucifer so the only way to beat it out is to know that you've been set free and serve the one who has set you free if my past is taken care of by the blood of calvary and my future's in heaven i am free to serve in the present my past has been taken care of by the blood of jesus christ on the cross that makes me to know that my future is in heaven secure and if my future is in heaven then i am free to serve in the present <laughs> Romans chapter 6 verse 20 to 22 when you are slaves of sin you are free in regard to righteousness it means you have no desire to conform to god's will so what benefit did you get at that time from the things which you are now ashamed none there was no benefit for the outcome of those things is death but now since you've been set free from sin and have become willing slaves to god we we have not been forced to be slaves to God we've chosen willingly to serve God you have your benefit which result to sanctification that is being made holy and set apart for God's purpose so when we begin to serve people what happens the benefit is sanctification we are being set apart God begins to work in our lives and the outcome is eternal life so our serving brings sanctification that prepares us eternally that's amazing but you know sometimes we experience a fear that comes out example if i do that people will take advantage of me they will walk all over me have you come across such people sometimes you felt that way there's a difference between choosing to serve and choosing to be a servant get those two things choosing to serve and choosing to be a servant when we choose to serve we are still in charge we decide whom we will serve and when we will serve and if we are in charge we will worry a great deal about anyone stepping on us that is taking charge over us because we have chosen to serve but when we choose to be a servant we give up the right to be in charge there is a great freedom in this if we voluntarily choose to be taken advantage of then we cannot be manipulated <laughs> if you voluntarily choose to be taken advantage of then you cannot be manipulated and christ showed a perfect example for, for that he willingly offered himself so no one took advantage of Jesus because he willingly offered himself and we can willingly offer ourselves Luke chapter 12 verse 42 to 47 the lord said who then is the faithful and wise steward of the estate whom his master will put in charge of his household 
to give his servants their portion of food at the proper time. He says, blessed, happy, prosperous to be admired is that servant whom his master finds so doing when he arrives. We should be counted as faithful steward of the manifold grace that God has given unto you and I. And I'm talking to the body of Christ. I assure you, most and somebody say to you, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. <laughs> Ooh, if you're faithful with the little, God will entrust you even with the more. But if that servant says in his heart, my master is taking his time in coming and begins to be the servants, both men and women, and to eat and drink and get drunk, the master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him and at an hour he does not know and will cut him in pieces and assign him a place with the unbelievers. And that servant who knew his master's will and yet did not get ready or act accord with his will will be beaten with many lashes of the whip. It's sorrowful if you're not doing what God has called you in simple terms. Your heart is cut into bits because you're not practically, if there's a word like that, carrying out the mandate that you've been assigned or set apart by God to do. So let us be found faithful in doing it. And you as an individual, don't never compare yourself with anyone, wherever, because God uniquely created you and put you where you are and gave you the personality, the, the, the grace, the talent, the skills, so that it's not for you to show off with arrogance or self-righteousness, but it's for you, with all humility, to serve His people. Number three, true service is indiscriminate in its ministry. Mark chapter 9, 35. They arrived in Capernaum when he was in the house. He asked them, What were you doing discussing and arguing about on the road? But they kept quiet because on the road they had discussed and debated with one another which one of them was the greatest. So sitting down to teach, he called the 12 disciples and said to them, If anyone wants to be first, he must be last of all in importance in a servant of all. Taking a child... He set him before them, he took a child, and taking him in his arms, he said to them, whoever receives and welcomes one child as this in my name receives me. And whoever receives me, not only me, but him who sent me. Yeah. Do you have to prove anything to a child when you, you're doing something to them? That's what he said. You don't have to prove anything. You know your privilege. You don't lose your dignity when you're ministering to a child. <laughs> they still see you as an adult. And that's what we've been called here. So Mark chapter 10 verse 42 to 45 says, Calling them to himself, is Jesus said to them, You know that those who are recognized as rulers of the dead, Gentiles, lord it over them and their powerful men exercise authority over them, tyrannizing them. But this is not how it is among you. Instead, whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first and most important among you must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Go and meditate on that scripture. Number four. True servanthood involves cost of love. It breaks selfishness. If you're going to be one who loves serving, it means you'll not only have to be willing to be interrupted, but also involved. Jesus did stand up and say, <laughs> there's a strange order in this room. I now want to tell you guys Oh, you should wash your feet before you eat. He didn't give a lecture on dirty feet. He simply got down on his hands and knees and washed. If you're not willing to wash feet, then keep your mouth shut. Keep your mouth closed when you see a dad. When I see a dad, I can either talk about the dad 
which is called judging, or I can involve myself in cleaning up the dirt in humility. So what I'm saying is be ready to be involved in people's lives by attending the situation on your knees in humility through intercession, standing on the gap powerfully. And Jesus did that for us, standing in the gap. And then the final one is true servanthood is unannounced. <laughs> Jesus' act of service was unannounced. He didn't stand up and say, disciples, come on. You will see love in action. Take notes, some few photos and record this. Put it there out on the Facebook, Instagram that, man, this is what I was doing. No, he just quietly got up. He washed the feet. It was not something he announced. It was something all of Jerusalem could see. He just quietly took care of the situation. The Bible says, let your light so shine among men so that by your good works they may glorify your Father in heaven. Colossians chapter 3, 17. Whatever you do, no matter what it is, whether it is in word or deed, do everything in what? In the name of the Lord Jesus. What does it mean? In dependence on Him, giving thanks to God the Father through Jesus. Same Colossians 23, verse 24. Whatever you do, whatever your task may be, work from the soul that is put, that is put in your very best effort as something done for the Lord and not for men. Why? Knowing with all certainty that it is from the Lord, not from men, that will receive the inheritance, which is your greatest reward. It is the Lord Christ whom you actually serve. Very important. I thought this would be the last part, but that will be the last part, I believe so. Part five about the difficulties with true servanthood. But all in all, I want to just encourage you. Let's emulate Christ Jesus. Yeah. Let's emulate him. And then we will know that we are not being manipulated because we are serving the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords who served us. And it is not stop serving us, it's still serving us to date as an example so that we can also serve people in the present. Having been delivered and from being slaves to sin, we can be slaves to righteousness. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord give you a servant attitude and a servant heart as you willingly take hold on the call of Christ in your life. Our perfect example of servanthood. The Lord bless you and keep you shine his face on you and be willing to serve the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, our Father, our amazing King. Glory be to his name. Amen.